I'm Danny the Robot Guy, and now that you found me, let's build some robots! <laughs> Because I have a pretty broad skill set, and it takes everything. It takes all kinds of skills. You know, it takes welding skills and wood fabrication skills and design skills and conceptualization. Honestly, a lot of it you just pick up. A lot of it just comes from years of building stuff and being around and tearing stuff apart. Um, I also had the opportunity and took it to go to Eastern Washington University and get a theater degree which was based more on a technical side than, a, than an acting side, which was a huge plus because it taught a lot about fabrication, mainly set fabrication and prop fabrication, but also lighting design and uh, the technical, the more technical aspects of theater. And also working on old cars and old trucks just for fun. You, you learn a ton from that little children book. It's well worth the money. My reasoning behind creating Zero Uno Zero Robotics was basically an avenue to be expressive in the artistic sense. But on a personal level, for the last 20 years working in the entertainment industry, my job was, be, was to be creative and to build all of this stuff for TV and film, but it was mainly somebody else's idea or it was for their purposes, obviously, for making film. Yet, I needed a way to express myself outside of work, which I'm sure you'd understand. And for me, I always created robots um, for fun, just as little tchotchkes, basically, for my friends. And they got more and more popular, and people started to really, really like them. And I've developed different a different look since back then, but that's where it started. And now, I think that's what the world is missing, is a really cool robot art gallery for this style of art, which I don't think you find anywhere in Montana besides right here at Cedar Creek, just outside of Libby. When I design my robots, one of the trickiest things is figuring out how the pieces actually are going to work together. Sometimes you pick a category, uh, be it automobilia or old military stuff or old fire department stuff. You get the idea. Other times, you want to just make a mishmash, a very eclectic collection of pieces. This one, for example, with Lucy, is done on a color palette instead. This is the original color of an old Arvin heater, and it matches really well with the brass ring that goes around this old, gigantic, awesome gauge. And then we offset that color with a little highlight red with her socks. So this is Lucy. She's not finished yet, gotta work out the arms, but I got a hunch she'll be pretty cool. Some of the pieces actually speak to you as you're putting them together. And you have to listen, because this is one I started a while ago, and I just found a few pieces that all went together. And, but first off, it seems like a she that's very excited and very happy, and somehow affiliated with either sports or some sort of cheerleading sort of thing maybe because she just seems really happy and she's got this ability to keep track of what's happening so I don't know we'll have to figure it out there are two pieces that I found at a swap meet a couple of weeks ago that I've been holding on to because I just I know they're gonna be cool together I just haven't figured out how to do it yet one of which is a hub odometer this is a contraption they used to use on cars that didn't have an odometer and you would put it in the wheel of the car and it would keep track of your mileage. That, coupled with this, 
which is an old speaker from a drive-in movie theater, have to be a good combination. Just gotta figure out what to do with them. One of my favorite parts about this kind of art is the blending of old and new. Now granted, both of these pieces are probably old to us, but this is a neat little combination. This is a Baylor transistor radio from eh, probably the 70s. But this is an Edison record from 1904. Still has the record, actually. Now, somehow, I have to figure out how to get old to meet the new in a really interesting combination. Sometimes we get lucky. Because as you're looking around, you find something like this that already screams robot without having to do a lot to it. And this one is a prime example of why I do it. This is a early 1900s out of a Model A or a Model T, some sort of oil distribution system, and long defunct. But now, almost a hundred years later, wow, yeah, a hundred years later, he's gonna get reborn into something cool and new. Absolute true repurposing. 